Hey guys, I'm Cadroth, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about instant death, what that means on servants, how that is applied, and sort of, you know, where it's good to use and why it is that you can never death proc something that you actually want to. Um, it's a very interesting system in the game. It actually could probably use a whole lot of work, so we'll be talking about that too. But we'll also probably cover some stuff that maybe you didn't know, so stay tuned. Any video that's going to talk about death proccing and death chance is going to require that you kind of understand the formula. There's a lot of factors that go into play as to whether or not you actually can death proc an enemy, whether or not you can land that death blow and negate their entire health pool. This formula basically says that you have the chance to proc death, the latent chance from your unit that's trying to do it. Let's take Nidocris for example, this will be the chance on her noble phantasm. It'll be the source of whatever is causing the death. This could be noble phantasms. This could be card procs, like in King Asan's case. This could be a special thing from a craft essence, like in David's case. Basically, this is just going to be whatever the source chance is from your unit. The death rate of the receiving unit is also going to factor into play, and that means that it's going to be a factor of both the rarity of units, the actual type of unit that it is, whether or not it's a servant, that sort of stuff. All that plays plays in. They each have their own individual death rates and they're actually pretty easy to look up in most cases. That is going to be multiplied by your chance and then it's going to be further multiplied and modified by any modifiers you have in your servant's kit or potentially maybe fight specific gimmicks. As we look at the modifiers here, this is going to be anyone that has a chance to increase their death rate. So like in Nidocris's case, she has it on her first skill, which is going to increase her odds or possibly even from like the overcharge of effect in certain cases some units have that and then you're also going to have death rate down so this is going to be like Shiki and King Hassan who can apply a reduced death chance to the enemy rather than anything else dealing with say debuff resistance or anything like that only death modifiers will actually come into play here you could have say debuff resistance down getting put on the enemy that would increase the odds of landing your death rate down on the enemy but that is not going to in and of itself affect the actual death chance it would only affect the odds of you landing the death rate down so that you do increase your death chance. To explain how this works, how to understand this formula and how it can increase your death chance, let's use Nidocris again. She's a really good example unit because she has a lot of the influencing factors in her kit. As you look at Nidocris here, you guys can see that at 100% charge, she would have a death chance of 50%. That is to say that that is not going to increase her death rate because if you had overcharged her or put her later in a sequence of MPs, you could increase it further, but we'll use the base 50. So this is going to be her hit rate. You guys can see that right there. For her first skill, if you pop that, again, at rank 10, that increases the death chance by level 100. So that is actually going to be a death rate up in this calculation. You guys can see it here as well. If you use her first skill, that's further modifying her chance to land death. And then you're also going to have the third factor being the Wyvern target here, who has a normal mob death rate of 80%. That is going to be the death rate to the receiving unit you guys can see that there and so the actual odds of landing death on this unit are going to be 50 percent times 80 percent times 200 percent right here to equal 80 percent so 80 percent of the time you will just land death on the unit and not have to care about how much damage you do 20 percent of the time you'll fail and then it will come down to damage and if we're talking wyverns a lot of them tend to be riders so be very careful in these circumstances since nidocris is a caster you're not going to be doing a whole lot of damage there but this is why we talk about this it's an important thing to understand how death rate works and why it's so useful for say farming applications but let's understand why it's not useful for a lot of others so the big reason behind that is actually going to be the death rate of the enemy as you guys can see here on this death rates are going to vary significantly by the enemy type that you're facing there are enemies out there in the game including a lot of soldier and just human type enemies that have a 100 percent chance to proc this means that you will basically be guaranteed to death them at just about every level if you look at this for say ghosts that's 80 percent chance and while it is high going back to the prior view here you guys could see 
that still didn't guarantee you the case because the latent hit rate was only 50%. So it actually basically ended up canceling out the 200% modifier here. 50% times 200% is gonna equal 100%. So instead we just had multiplied 100% times 80% here to get 80%. That's basically multiplying 80 times one at that point. So the thing you guys gotta understand is a 100% modifier will practically guarantee it, but be careful. You do still need enough death rate Rate for that to succeed but then there's other rare enemy types particularly large enemies that have low death rates like dragons in this case and demons you're very unlikely to land death against them regardless of whatever modifiers you have that's an important thing to understand here also enemy servants this is why you guys can almost never land death proc against a boss is because a lot of enemy servants have a death rate of 0.1 percent it makes it such a minuscule chance of landing that it's very very unlikely to ever land when you want it to it's not something you can plan around or rely on and this is why we say death is a meme in a lot of cases because a lot of servants have death built into their kit and yet sadly it's not going to be enough in certain circumstances to help them succeed so a lot of what I would call the itemization of their kit is somewhat wasted on death and being able to trigger that when it's not going to be that useful to them right now and this is my primary reason for saying that death rates in the game actually need a rework they're not really how they should be a lot of single target units almost never get to utilize that portion of their kit that has death chance on it because it's just not going to land against the enemies that they're fighting it doesn't mean that that's the case with all of them again so a servant might have a 0.1 rate but i believe shadow servants have a 10 rate that is better than the 0.1 significantly but it's still not very likely to land so it's something you guys got to consider of what you're fighting and there's even weird circumstances like with chimeras where depending on the chimera you're fighting the standard is 20 percent, but it might have 10 percent. it might have 30 percent. it depends you're just gonna have to understand that it's gonna work in a lot of certain apps applications but it's also not going to work or be reliable in a lot of others and typically speaking the higher the rarity the higher the impact factor of the unit is it a boss is it a sort of end node unit that's going to be the big hurdle you have to overcome you really can't death proc it in most cases though there are some notable exceptions for instance there are times during the k and k rerun or even during babylonia with the lamu where they're actually uniquely susceptible to death and that is because the fight has made that it's gimmick so in those circumstances it's really good another example would be the ghost in day eons interlude where you actually go in there and it's a 900k ghost it's one of the earlier interludes in the game back when i believe the only single target caster out at the time was medea so the fact that they wanted you to kill a 900k ghost with medea probably should have been a big indicator that no you were in fact supposed to death it and typically speaking undead type enemies like ghosts and skeletons and stuff like that have really high death rates you're more good in those cases but for anyone that just heard that and thought oh i can death proc barbados coming up in case files good luck you probably can't even though he is undead it's not the actual undead trait that increases death rates it's just the fact that they're an undead enemy that tends to give them a higher death rate and barbados doesn't have that so now back to the point where we were talking about itemization in a unit's kit and why that comes into play there's something you guys need to understand here not all servants with death rate are created equal and that's a big, big, big factor. Typically speaking, you're going to want somebody who deals death after damage here. If you deal death after damage, that means that you get your damage out first and it means you get potential star generation and refund from hitting the unit. That's something you want versus doing it before means you don't get any refund, you don't get any star generation and it could potentially cost you some loopability. It's not a huge concern in all cases like say, with cursed arm here where you probably don't care you just want that death proc to land especially as a single target unit meaning he's very likely to be used against boss type enemies sadly it's not got a high chance in most of those cases in fact unless you're facing some sort of beast type boss or something like that with cursed arm it's very unlikely that you do land his death proc and that's why i think you guys will probably see on here some units you didn't even realize had death chance in their kit 
it's partially because the single target variants are just not well known for it. You almost have to overlook it because it's such a meme. The ones I can guarantee you probably do know about are like Shiki and again, possibly Shisho. They're so widely known for it either by virtue of their big use, like in Shisho's case, she is used in a lot of boss killing things, a lot of raids to overcome things. Again, she actually will be a decent opportunity for those of you guys looking at Barbados coming up. And then we also have people like Shiki who is built around that death chance and stuff. She actually has it built into the skills of her kit. So people are far more aware of it than say on Cursed Arm or something like that, where it's literally just part of the NP and otherwise nothing else influences it. Just to continue talking here about this, the reason that death before damage could be bad is let's take a look at the Nido Chris's here. Nido Chris Caster is widely regarded as an amazing, if not the best death farmer in the game. The reason being she can 100% charge herself so she can take out not just the first wave, which is often full of bronze enemies and bronze enemies have the highest chance to be death proc compared to silver having a medium chance and gold having a very low chance. Typically speaking, Nido Chris can take out that first wave. And then if you have her with starting charge on her, she might even be able to take out the next wave as well. That makes her a really good, really versatile farmer. But because of that 100% charge, Nido Chris doesn't really care about her refund. She is really, really good at getting back to another NP for you. And thus it's not a huge deal that she procs her death before damage. If we look at her summer counterpart here, Nido Chris Assassin, she has a little bit of an issue because unlike her caster version, she doesn't have 100% charge built into her kit. So she is way more reliant for refund on hitting units and actually getting the refund there to get back to another NP. She could be a potential looper for you in that regard. The problem is she does death before she deals damage, which means she can potentially screw herself out of her ability to loop. She can cost herself that ability to get back to another Noble Phantasm simply because she landed death. And that's where I say that death really needs to be re-examined on a lot of these units. There should be a recompense for that, a change to the system where you can say, okay, because Nita Chris proc death, maybe she just gets a flat charge added or something like that in order to replace the unit that she otherwise would have been hitting and gaining refund from. I'm not going to be the math expert here that tries to figure something like that out, but there should be numerous solutions to a problem like this. It's why I say again that they need to re-examine this especially not just in a case like Nino Chris Assassins, but in a case like the single targets here where it's just very unlikely that they ever land it. And yet it is eating up some of the cost of their kit. That could be something that's used on something else. It's balanced around these sorts of things. They do need a way the single targets to at least eventually be able to work their way up to death proccing something. I understand they probably don't want a lot of units to be able to land death immediately on turn one and be able to just cheese a whole number of bosses and difficult enemy types in the game. They probably need to re-examine how this happens, maybe by virtue of having a stacking type system where the reduction to their defense against death starts piling up and eventually you can land death proc on them. I don't know what that is. I'm going to hope that one day Delightworks addresses this and figures it out. But for right now, you're stuck with what it is. And that is that on a lot of single targets, death is just a meme. On AOEs, death can be really good for farming purposes. This is why the after damage crew can be pretty nice. In fact, if you look up here at Doman, Doman is a quick AOE looper with 80% charge in his kit. So that does kind of make him at least a little bit similar to Nido in that regard. But because he deals his death after damage, you're sure that he's actually going to get the refund that he needs from that. So that's going to help him out a lot too. You guys can look at Shisho Assassin here and compare her against Nido Chris Assassin. And while Shisho Assassin does struggle to loop, she can actually loop if you have, say, a super scope and double Scotty in a waiver. You can actually kind of force it to happen in a lot of cases, but she will struggle if it's certain enemy types, if there's not enough enemies in the wave, yada, yada, yada. But again, she She's not actually going to cost herself the ability by proccing the death on her MP. It's a much more valuable thing to have it after. And you guys can see as well, this is really good for units that basically like to card and go after death in that regard, because that's not going to cost them both crits. That's not going to cost them stars or anything like that and refund from their cards, given the gimmick that they actually have in. It's really nice instead to have it after damage rather than before the damage of the source. That is death in a nutshell right there.
I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is a really fun one to do. I do like covering death memes and please don't take this the wrong way. Do understand that this is coming from a source where I want to say that death needs to be worked on so that it's better for all these units. But again, death for right now, mostly just a farming tool, but it is what it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe, like, and comment. Again, it helps the channel. You guys will be there then as well for the next video that we do. And don't forget to check me out on Twitch where I stream weeknights at 7 p.m. FGO every time. And then you guys can also join the Discord. We got a great community on there. I'll put the link in the description below in the social section. Just make sure if you guys do join the Discord that you assign a role. Otherwise, server will kick you. Really easy to do if you need help, just ask them on. But I will see you guys for the next one. Good day.